So last time on Power Play, I met Joe Vivier. He took the fight under real late notice. Respect to him and props to him. Credit to him for taking it. Obviously, I got I got put down what three times. Oh, oh. oh the body shots got him. There it is again. Oh, on the left. Oh, it hurt him. I managed to pull myself back up each time. It was all body shots because. I was under conditioned, we'll say. I promised him the rematch as uh, Eddie got towards him. He wants it and he wants to take on the AK-47 again. He beat me because I hadn't trained. I still gave him trouble over five rounds. Last time we banged really hard. It was a good, hard, clean fight. What a scrap we had. <laughs> Back and forth, elbows, body shots, head kicks, knees, everything. It was, yeah, it was a great fight. Looking forward to the next one. But uh, I just had a little bit too much power for him. Will he have enough power for me? This time, I can't wait to get in there and find out. And to still put on a show like that, this fight sells itself. It was like, I wonder what would happen if he trained. And you get to find out. So I get to go in there. I've, I've trained, I've done some sit-ups. I can take a body shot. We're all good. Good to go. Thai boxing enthusiast, March 23rd, myself, the AK-47, will be taking on Joe Bouvier in the power play ring. It's going to be elbows. It's going to be warfare and I am coming for the knockout and I'm sure Joe wants that as well. So make sure you tune in or come see this show with all the action on March 23rd at Powerplay Promotions. All right, let's go to one that obviously has a very special spot in our hearts given how close of a panel we've become. Chris Bradford, Joe Bubier, the rematch. I called this one at Powerplay 39. I've called a lot of fights in my time and I immediately tweeted no one tweets anymore, but I still do a little bit. <laughs> that that was the best fight I've ever called. And it was the best fight I've ever called for a number of reasons. Not only was it action-packed from start to finish, the whole concept around it with the late replacement and then taking it on board and then the full tie rules and the body shots and Joe just kept getting up like the freaking Terminator and you threw everything at him and it just couldn't stop him and then won a clear points decision. And we, we sort of said straight away, me and, and my commentary partner at the time, it's got to happen again. It's got to happen under full tie rules. And... Thank God, Joe, you've delivered. So, Chris, we'll, we'll throw to you shortly. Yeah, but first, no Joe and Vic, I'd love to get your insights on, I think, what I called the rematch of the year in March. Joe, you take it away, my man. I'll take that away. Yeah, look, I, Chris was set to fight a, a, a Thai guy from Thailand, and it was mm. unfortunate uh, the visa didn't come through on time. I mean, sometimes these things happen. It's, you know, it's not in our control. However, um, I, well, my wife and myself, we're up all night, and there was two days or three days before that the fight was the show was on, and we're trying to look for a replacement for Chris because one thing I just don't like is you know letting anybody down when mm. it comes to knowing how hard these guys train and prepare for a fight. In saying that, my wife turns around and goes, "Joe Bubier," and I'm going, "No way, he won't take mm. it." She goes, "Joe Bubier," and I said, "He won't take it." She goes, "I'm going to ring him." I said, "Go ahead." She goes, "Guess what? He's taking it." <laughs> I said, "You are kidding." Shout me. out to Demi Nader again. Yeah, you go. Mm. I've got to give her credit for that one. And I'll tell you one thing, and he goes, "Look, yes." I haven't been training. I've been training a little bit, but I've been in Thailand. I've been in a little bit of strife. Um, I'm not going to tell you where I've been, but <laughs> I've been locked away for a little while. <laughs> so he, he was training, but a different sort of yeah, training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and seriously, I mean, there's a good story behind this kid. And, you know, where he's been and what he's been through and to get thrown something like that at you to fight someone like Chris, mm. where you know he's a powerful puncher and you know that he can take punishment, but he'll also give you punishment and he won't give up. And he turned around and goes, yep, I'll take the fight, not a problem. Now, he rocked, up the, he rocked up to the show on the night, and i tell you mm. one thing, as you were there, you were oh, commentating yeah. on the night, and everyone was watching, he had the crowd on the edge of their seat. Yeah, he I took did. it to Chris, I thought. Um, Chris was a powerful guy. I mean, he really hurt Joe, and you could hear those punches on the body, on, on Joe's body, how, how much it was, mm. you know, it was really affecting him. Yep. But he just look at Chris, and he just get up and go, come yeah. on, let's keep going. And he just, and the crowd got behind him, and I think the more the crowd got behind him, the more he, he sort of get going as well. And I, and if I was Chris, you know, I'd be thinking, what have I got to do to he, stop He just this guy? lies. Like, yeah. the first one was clean and, all right, he got up and full credit to you. The second one, mm. it was like, all right, let's get ready for the main event, uh, for the next card. And then <laughs> up and then the third one, it was like, oh, he, he's dead. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he just rose again. And so oh, I've got a number of questions for you, Chris. The first one, um, how does it affect you when you know that you've got him and you've got him good? Yeah, and so he just the, keeps getting up. I think it was around three or four, sorry. I, I dropped in twice. So right. first was a body punch. Did not even look at my corner, so shame on me. But I knew <laughs> I had to go to the body again, so I set it up with a kick and went back to the body again, dropped him again. Yeah. Of course, 
he's hurt. I've got to go for that body one more time. And I just ran out of time. So I was spewing, went to my corner, and uh, we discussed. We're going to set up the body shots again, work the leg, and went for it again. Caught him again later on. But damn, it was frustrating. He kept getting up. <laughs> um, credit to you, Joe. That's, that's strength. That, yeah, that's, that's heart. And um, I tell you what, if it happens to go the other way on Saturday night, I'm going to be getting up and giving it back. I'll tell you Good. right now. Um, was, so, this, was this a strategic? Because, you know, Joe came off a lengthy fight camp of 47 hours, which basically um, involved a few pints at the pub and a couple of meat pies, and then <laughs> rocked up and fought. So yeah, It's insane. A freak of nature. So he didn't have much of a camp, you know, looked in great nick, albeit that he probably wasn't as in good condition as he'd like to be. Knowing that the gas tank might not be as full as it usually would, was it strategic to go for the body? Not really. Um, you know, when you hit that, that experience, like I've had, you know, 37 pro, 22 amateur fights now, um, you see things in an instant. Uh, I was pairing up a little bit too heavy. I wasn't yeah. really comboing, pairing up heavy. Trying to go for the head, and then as I was coming for the head, I noticed he lifted his arms a couple of times. Yeah. And my muscle memory seen the opening, and boom, pounded the body, and it was there to go. Got it. Just a bit lucky that he was a bit unconditioned. <laughs> um, yeah, but hey, I'll take that. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, it, when you reach that level, I personally think it's a little bit of muscle memory. Joe, you would know, Vic, you would know when you work with your trainer, you work on your combinations. It becomes an instinct. Sure, absolutely. Um, it's so not a thought, it becomes it? instinct. And you know, when, when you're a fighter or yourself, you see that opening. It's just there and it pops, so, and that's what we want. Um, but, God damn, don't get up again, Joe, if I do that. <laughs> <laughs> my, my final question for this one, and I'm going to put something to you that I hope doesn't upset you, but, you know, Ooh. that's what we're here for. So, and I've got two blocks in between you and I, so and just be careful, all right, because, you know, this, this, isn't, this is better than what it looks on paper. <laughs> Look, fought Joe on short notice, mm. beat Joe. Yep. On paper, Joe is more experienced. Yep. Um, potentially more credentialed yep. as, a, as a Muay Thai fighter with his international travel and so forth. Ex-world champion. Ex-world champion. We'll add that in as well. Um, I, I guess some of the rumour mill, you know, would suggest, and I know that you're somewhat aware of this, that on a full fight camp under full Thai rules, that, that on the 23rd of March, Joe mm. Bubier might, might mess you up a little bit. Yeah. How, how do you feel about that? Yes. And, and look, how do you respond to that? Uh, without swearing, Please. um, yeah, okay. I react to that. I hope he does try and hurt me because, um, I'm going to cut him to pieces if he does come at me. Um, I've got a saying, stand tall, walk forward. Mm. That's how I project myself in life and how I project myself in a fight. Yeah. So if he wants to walk forward at me, I'm going to stand there and bang away. I promised Joe when he came and seen me, uh, about fighting Steve McKinnon, who went five rounds with Absolutely. I said, I do not care. If it's the fifth round, I will still put on a show, I will still swing, and I will still bang. So in a way, I kind of hope he does because for me, it's about the ticket sales, it's about entertaining the crowd. You know, I'm too old and done to worry about <laughs> rankings and stuff like that. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice having that mm. little baby wrapped around my um, waist would be fantastic. But when it all comes down to it, I just want to put on a good show. So that's when I walk outside, I walk down the street, I can hold my head high. And people go, hey, that AK is all right. You'll find yeah. anyone and put on a show. And that's what I'm about and that's what I want. Sorry, the, uh, the previous fight, that was K1 rules. It was full tie rules. rules. Full tie. So yeah. both, both fights full tie rules. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, gotcha. I threw a few elbows. Joe didn't throw that many. Look, he was a bit unfit, so he kept his distance off me. I get the game plan. He'll definitely, as you're saying, he will definitely come forward more because he'll be fitter this time. Yeah. But look, you know. Don't write the AK off. He's got a few <laughs> tricks up his sleeve. I, I, me personally, I, I think if a fighter's going to be too concerned about what everyone is saying and what everyone's thinking, Great point. he's not thinking on the job. He's not thinking about what he's about and, and what the team's about and what their game plan is about. If, if any fighter's going to go out there and worry about, oh, you know, the crowd have been saying that you, you're going to get done on this fight or you're, he's going to get done. You ain't going to no, I'm just going to make one other point. When we announced the McKinnon, and shout out to my boy Steve McKinnon, Chris Bradford, oh, AK's going to get spanked. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's going to yeah. get bashed. He's going to get knocked out in a second. Well, little AK held his, you know, held he his did. own, so don't worry about that. I, um... Had a boy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. you know, in all fairness to Chris, I mean, I, I, I was there ringside watching that fight, obviously, and, and there was a couple moments there where Chris actually rocked Steve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, no, there was, yeah, and yeah. I think Steve was in shock of that. Yeah. He was yeah. in shock of that, and when we asked for that rematch, and no disrespect to Steve, and he, you know, he, his time is up, and he's decided yeah. he wants to move on, and 
he's been a great ambassador to the sport and he's got a he's had a great journey in in the sport. But and he goes, look, you know, I don't, I don't think I really need that fight at this point yeah. in time in my life. And credit to him. And, 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 but that's, yeah. that's showing respect to you. Absolutely. Thought, you know I mean? And he gave that's me respect on the that's night. That's how I took it. Yeah. Like you said too, he gave me credit on the night for hurting him, having yeah. the ability to put him on the back foot. Mm. You know, Steve normally pushes people back. Absolutely, yeah. And I pretty much pushed him back Absolutely. for like, most of the fight. Yeah. Um, and that's my stupidity at times. <laughs> and it's a bit too tough for me own good. But um, he respected me and gave me the credit. Now, going back to Joe, um, yeah, I don't know if I've quite got that credit yet, so I might have to uh, take it back. Credit so is earned, and it will Just be Just quickly on that fight, uh, the previous fight, so myself, I'm going to go home and do a little bit of research because mm-hmm. the story that you were telling me a little bit earlier about the whole uh, setup, previous yeah. fight, amazing. So first thing I'm going to do, get, get home, uh, stick on YouTube, and what am I going to look up? Well, you're going to watch on Powerplay Promotions YouTube, and you're going to just put in, Chris Bradford, Chris Bradford and Joe Bibi and, and, and the fight will come up and you can be the judge of it on your own. Might even have a pack <laughs> of chips tonight, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>